What's up guys, Steve here. In this video, we're gonna talk about sorting cards and preparing them for listing. One of my most asked questions on Instagram and YouTube is how I prepare the single cards to list, and we're just gonna go through this. I've probably talked about it before, but what a better time. And now I'm also recording in high definition 4K. I actually thought I was previously uh, in my last two videos, but I didn't hit save settings on my recording and everything was in 720. So I hope this is good uh, quality. Let me know in the comments how, how good quality is because moving forward with the channel, I want to do everything in the highest quality I can. Just for like museum level sake, I want to look back in a few years and see a, everything in the highest quality possible. So apart from that, let's start sorting. So I got all the fire type cards from that one video where I sorted everything into type. And these are the fire type cards. And I'm just going to go through exactly how it is. And I'll probably end up rambling a whole bunch just because it's uh, it's a little bit boring, I guess. I mean, there's only so much I can talk about when it comes to this stuff. But, it, you know, I don't really need to sit here and explain to people, like, how to sort things into alphabetically. But if people want to see it and they want to hear me talk, well, I'm not really going to be opposed to that. So I just do basic A to Z. Basic A to Z. And you'll see... When you start sorting things into type, like the way I'm doing, it uh, it kind of starts to make sense. Even right now, it's making sense. And then, like, when it comes to sorting the cards, like, in your brain, like, the muscle memory, I guess, from... What is this Pokemon? What do you even call it? Kulab. What am I thinking? Um, it goes here. I'm not very good with the alphabet also, so it's not always perfect. Don't don't get upset if I don't put the things in the perfect way, but you can already see it, it's like happening. So I got like Moltres, yeah, that'll go with uh, the M's here, and you know I, I sorted through some Blaziken cards already. Now this is like whoever's Blaziken this is. I forgot whose Blaziken this is, but I just put like someone's Blaziken. I just put it with the Blaziken cards. It's just way easier. EX cards obviously will just go. Everything's alphabetical. All the Charmander cards will go there. It kind of forces me to remember what the Pokemon are called, and I do not remember what this one's called. Infernic. You see how good that is. So, you know, Flareon, G-H-I. There we go. We're learning the the alphabet as we go. And it's also a little bit cool, to be honest. Because, like, uh, I buy so much, and it's not actually that good when it comes to, like, running a, a card store to buy so much and not put it out for sale. But I'm in a more fortunate position where I can like how do I explain it? I can kind of like you know afford to keep the cards to the side for a long period of time look at these Charizard EXs Charizard level X's put them there uh that is came round. so you know it's not that bad if I don't list things instantly even if it's six months later sort of thing so you can see the plan here kind of coming into fruition and you know the Flareon cards are up there and this is, in my opinion, I, I have thought about this millions of times. Like, I can't even explain to you how many times I've thought about how to sort cards efficiently. And when it comes to loose singles that don't require set sorting, so think about that for a second. That, that's a that's a tongue twister, random wobble fan. So this is what I, like the way I list things these days compared to how I used to do them back in the day where I would sort things into sets and then put them into their sets in the boxes and have everything really nice and neat. These are loose singles separated into chronological, oh not chronological, sorry, alphabetically, A to Z, and then they're just sorted in boxes A to Z easily. And usually in the boxes they're sorted chronological if we can, it's not that necessarily. Like when we sort them in our boxes, we'll usually put the cards we have the most of in the back. So maybe like Hollow Legend, I have a lot of these. So there'll probably be like a spot for Hollow Legends front and then a spot for Hollow Legends back. But it won't really necessarily be right at the front because they're pretty um they're pretty new. And even like a fire type new will go with the fire type cards as well. So it, it it's pretty uh I guess self explanatory. But the reason why we do this is Overall, it's the lowest amount of sorting required ever. Like, you could have your whole inventory sorted A to Z without 
how do I explain that? With, without um, I'm, I'm tongue twisting right now, really badly. So, so the way I'll just explain the way I saw my inventory, just for just for the sake. This, this is the worst video. I shouldn't record videos at what is it? One fifteen? One fifty? So, how am I explaining it? So, we sort out inventory from all the types: grass, psychic, lightning, fire, fighting, everything like that, and then A to Z. So there's with trainers and energy included, there's roughly, I think there's 10 different areas that we have our cards sorted into. 10 different rows, you could say it, in, in our 5k count boxes. Some rows are a little bit bigger than others. We might have two rows for some types because we have a lot of cards. It's a great Delta Species Tyranitar. What's this condition like? It's pretty good, actually. A fly just flew past my head. <laughs> what the? I've never even seen a fly in my house ever. That is crazy. I'll have to get him later. Oh, that's what happens when you've got a puppy in the house. Start getting flies. So, Kingdra's K. Don't have many Ks, to be honest. So, I'm going to put it on top of the Ls. Because I don't think there's many K fire types. And hopefully that dog can't hear it chewing up on some things. I'm I'm dog-sitting really late at night. So, Kimberly can get some sleep. The dog keeps acting up. So, I'm staying up with the dog next to me. And she's just laying on the ground there. So, where, where was I getting at? So, we saw it. 10 different types sorted A to Z. Sounds self-explanatory, right? But some people, they might have all their cards sorted A to Z, and that's theoretically 26 different spots for one for every letter in the alphabet. I don't think that's that effective because when it comes to slotting in cards, let's say Arceus is probably not a good example, but Arcanine, majority of Arcanine cards are fire. Right. And we can all agree with that. So... When it comes to sorting these Arcanine cards, once they're listed, they can easily go in the boxes. You can find fire type A Arcanines very easily. If everything is just A to Z without sorting into type, you're in for a bad time because you're going to be looking through A. Like you could have A fire type, grass A's, psychic A's, but then you're just doing the same thing, but then like stacking them alphabetically, which also is a lot more effort than being like, oh, that's the fire type box. Oh, that's the grass type box, if, if you know what I mean. Because it's the same thing both ways. You're just overcomplicating it the, the second way I, I explain. So that's why we have everything separated by type. Now, I haven't done this forever. I learned this uh, probably about a year and a half ago from my friend uh, Trainer JI because we were doing it a little bit differently. Similar, but a little bit differently. But yeah, this way is just, it's really good. And... It, it makes everything a lot easier when it comes to like finally listing and putting the cards away. So we don't have much more cards to go. So ooh, Tepi goes with T. So you know, I'm I'm not sitting here and just basically being like, oh yeah, you guys are. Uh, if you want to do, I'm not gonna list this card. If you want to sell the cards, you gotta sort them alphabetically and list them. It sounds so like. It, it sounds so, like, what's the word? So, uh, obvious, right? It's like, yeah, obviously. It's not obvious. It's a C with the Bs. But, Blaze of Kin, Blaze of Kin, Cyndaquil, Moltres Play, Charizard, Oh, Heat Ramp. But, you know, when it comes to sorting, like, this isn't many cards. I only have, like, 500 here or something like that usually when i'm doing this i'm at like 1000 2000 3000 and without thinking you can do type sorting very very easily type sorting into alphabetical because you're really just matching the pokemon up at that point i think that's heat ran no that's volcanion what am i doing victini volcanion sorry kind of want to talk about the next part, but I don't want to do it until I get there, so I'm trying to go as fast as possible. But th these are loosely sorted as well, which does help when you buy stuff and it's loosely sorted. Into there, into there. I'm not listing those three, that's for sure. Now, when I say I'm not listing those three, I mean, those cards probably will get listed eventually. I have learned over the years that, like, everything sells. So there are buyers. I sold, like, a whole bunch of random trainers today on my single store that like I was pretty much the only one in the world with them listed. It does happen, but currently I have like $250,000 of raw cards to list that I, I need to get to. I can't, and I need, I need to prioritize 
some cards. And it's not that like, oh, I need to sell these, I need to get my money back, or I need to sell these. It's more like, okay, I should start listing these because I want to see how fast the cards sell. I want to see what they sell like. I, I want to see like exactly how they go because I want to buy more. That's the main reason. I want to get more cards. I, I love I love this shit so much. I want to get as much cards as possible. So I, I need to get my butt in gear. Stop being so lazy and just start mass listing a lot of singles because I love these like diamond and pearl hollows. I, I love these EX hollows. Even a card like this, I mean, this is a bit different because this is actually a little bit of an expensive card. The band Ma Magmortar artwork. This artwork is not in English because he's got a big cannon. Look at that camera. I hope it comes up in YouTube like that. Guys, please tell me. Say, Steve, I want every video to be 4K from now on. I just uh, I just ordered the new SSD. Oh, not SSD, a portable SSD. So I can kind of have extra storage space for my recording computer. Because I actually have two computers. My main computer is over there, and it has like all my crazy stuff so I can play my video games. And this computer is my old gaming computer that I set up with the capture card for the 4K um, my, my 4K DSLR camera going downwards and it has this webcam going forwards to me so uh, I don't I didn't want like all the like big microphone hanging over the top the camera going down all the arms the big light thing here another light thing I didn't want all that surrounding my main space as I think anyone can agree if you use the computer a lot you want to have your your space pretty clean because having all that around would be pretty annoying so I'm still rambling but we're almost done um, oh, I just forget what things are called sometimes. Oh, geez. so now I'm finished. I just start from the top. So I go Arcanine, all these cards. So that matches up there. So I don't really do them by error or anything, but I just go Arcanine, put them all like there in my hands. It's really easy to sort because you've done it into alphabet. If I was to sort these into played damage near min before sorting them into alphabetical, I would have to sort them alphabetically again three times when I did played damage near mint. So that's just kind of like triple handling. It's very unnecessary. So these Blaziken cards, making sure I'm matching them all up. There's only Blazikins. So I, when I start sorting, I just turn the cards around, the pile around. I don't have it like any other way. So sometimes, like the Cs, there's a lot. You can't just breeze through them. But let me get rid of that Charizard. Let me get rid of that. Put the Charizards down the bottom here. You guys can't see it, but usually I would have, because of the way the camera is, I'm not really utilizing my space perfectly. So there's no other overlapping things. Charizard, Charizard. Okay. I have to move these. Sometimes if you have a lot of one card, so I have a lot of Cs, I need to start at the back here as well. So I'm just going to quickly do this. So I, I grab the cards from the very end, and I can just put them to the side there, and then flip them around when I'm finished. Uh, Torchic, I don't have any more of that Torchic. And usually, uh, I'm a little bit faster than this, but my brain's running on E, and I'm staying awake to take care of my child. So, uh, Typhlosion, 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 Torchic, Tepig, Tyranitar. Torchic can go here, and then we go to Torkoal. There we go. Now anyone who's going to comment, oh my god, you're moving the cards around so much, they're all damaged. Please, don't do that. That's embar embarrassing yourself. Right. Salamence, so some S's. We only have two S fire types, so that was nice and easy. Reshiram here, Rayquaza. So we put this other Reshiram at the front. And I love this Reshiram black and white promo. It's so nice. So a full arts in a binder, like a textured full arts in a binder, is like top tier collectible in Pokemon. You can't convince me otherwise. So I'm just starting from the back here, I'm just putting the pile like over here separately, and when I finished, I'll turn it around and then put it on the top, and then the last card will be at the top. We got this card here. We only have we got two of those. Typical Dream Shine, Victini, Volpix, Volpix. So I'll put that. Here, Quilava, Tame Rups, and Quilava can go there. So now I have plenty of space for everything I'm doing. So lots of Charizards. I believe all these are the same one. 
It's actually quite annoying. This Mega Charizard artwork has like 15 different cards. And this is why I sort it into type. Because if you're trying to sort a whole bunch of things at once, and you're just increasing the amount of like cards, the desk can look like this, and it can get much, much worse. Like there are some like grass type is really bad. There's like one letter on grass type that's like nearly impossible to sort because there's just too many cards. And lightning type, you know, in the, when you get to P and lightning type, you got Pikachu, you got Pichu, you got all the Chews, plus all Minun, they have heaps of cards. And there are lots of those cards, I like them, and I tend to buy them, so. All right, so I'm going to start with Charizard here, just to clear up some space. So I found all the Charizard cards. Not that one. And, you know, it might look like I'm going really fast, but I've just been doing this for a long time. Maybe it does look like I'm going fast. So if you don't think I'm going fast, well, screw you then. <laughs> if you think I'm going slow, I know you guys can't see what is going on, but I'm just trying to get through this. Okay, all the Charizard cards are done. I'm just going to put that at the top here. So then when I do the rest of my Cs, I have a lot more space. Cyndaquil. Got another Cyndaquil there, another Cyndaquil. One last Charizard, Stormfront Charizard, Charmander. Also, when I do sorting, I like to put things at the bottom and like my hands where they are, like right here, like where my fingers are dangling. Uh, this is pretty much the end of my desk. So when I want to pick a card up, I can just like slide it off really easily. And it's not to like protect it or anything because, you know, they're all played on sleep cards on things. But when you're trying to pick up a card and you're like constantly fumbling, honestly, that can get pretty annoying even though it's a pretty dumb thing to be annoyed by, anything that you can do to make the process way smoother is like a really good idea in my opinion. Okay, Charizard. If I can easily, I can just slide stuff off and just easily pick it up. No problem. And that was easy. Just all the C's sorted. And now when I sort them, I'll just do an example right here. I guess, is there any Charizards? Uh, yeah, there we go. So I look at this card. I was like, okay, that card's damaged. That card's played, that card's damaged. Then I have this one, I go, okay, that card's played, damaged. Played, played. So usually I do like a few checks. I look at it and I'm like, okay, is there, oh, where's my zoom in actually? Does that work? Does this start battery in it? Oh my, oh my lord. And then this, oh, we can see. All right. So this is this card, right? It's pretty obviously played. And it has no like structural defects. The front's fine. I can tell. This is a played card. It's not damaged. Is there a damaged card I can... Well, all these card pile on the right is all damaged. So this card here, it's a little bit worse. It's like same condition on edges and stuff, but it's got crease down the bottom. Bend here. Bend up the top there. It's a bit yucky. You know, it's a bit yucky. The front's all beat up. Scratches everywhere. Bends. So this is just damaged and I have three piles if I zoom out so we got I usually put near mint on the left plate in the middle and damage on the right same way I list them same way I have them sorted in every box is near mint front plate in the middle damage on the right on all my listings it's near mint at the top plate in the middle I try to keep that consistency going so we'll zoom back in Beep. I love the way the zoom sounds um so this card here very obviously just played put it there this card here played 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 Played. This will make sense in a second. So this card here has a crease at the back and a crease on the top. So might be a contender for damaged. Charizard level X. Yep, you can see the crease in the front here. Usually a card that like has enough defects to like ruin the front image and the front like a uh, what's the word for it? PSA used the word uh, like eye appeal. If the eye appeal of the card's like, oh, that card's damaged, then I put it as damaged. This card's like borderline damaged and played. It's actually kind of, if I can find an actual card that's damaged, maybe this Charizard level X. They actually don't look that bad. Let me find the light. Yeah, see, this one's damaged. It has a bunch of indents on the front here. If I can get that to show. See, there's an indent there. It's got a bend on the corner. It's got kind of edgeware all around. It's missing part of the card there, you see. 
So this card, I would put it under damage. These other ones played. A crease can still be played, but when it like really affects the front of the card, it's like no good. See this card here, I would put this as damaged. It's got edge wear all around, which is, you know, consistent with played. But the corners are like warping in. The front's like super scratched. It's got like all the dents there. The bottom right corner is like folding in, so that would that would be damaged. Etc. etc. This one here, another another candidate for damage. See that the back left is like peeling open. It's a different Charizard entirely. So now imagine I went to list these cards. This was the played cards I grabbed from the middle. First card, one Charizard. Oh wow. There is seven played Charizards here. Who put these here? Who easily condition sorted these to all being played? And now when I go, okay, all these Charizards are whatever price, $14.99 for an EX Battle Boost Charizard. I don't know the actual price. I'll Kimberly will do it, but like when I list them, regardless of how you use listings, variations, or single listings, I can do six, seven, uh, I can do seven listings on eBay, one after the other, seven, copy, copy again, sell similar, sell similar, sell similar. $15, $15, $15, upload the photos, have seven photos scanned in a row. That's seven listings so much faster than if I was just to condition sort these into, you know, all the different ways than I normally would without doing A to Z. If I just listed them and they were just like one big pile of played, one big pile of damage, one big pile of near mint, and it was like not sorted into A to Z when I'm listing, well, you'd find out that the eight Charizard level X's that are all played that I can listen in a row and save a lot of time actually end up just being randomly picked out. Maybe that's the 10th card as a Charizard level X and then 50 cards in and then 60 and you've got to keep searching the listing up and then you don't remember the price. You've got to make sure you double check the played price. And then when you have them, let me zoom in again. Some of these Charizard level X's, this one could probably go damaged to be honest. I'm double checking. That one go damaged. But some of these, like this played one, that isn't quite damaged but still has that crease there, is probably worse condition than another played one. These are all pretty bad though. But like, is there is there one here that's like not too bad? Okay, this one here. See, this is a played Charizard level X. But you see there, it's like barely any edge wear. What's wrong with this card? Right here little minor crease on the front. So I'm not going to sell this as near mint, even if this is like relatively clean. But this is like a $100 card or something. I don't know how much it is. It's a $100 card and probably 70 to 100 in play. And it's got a tiny little uh, little dent at the top there. So this card is obviously in much better condition than our homie at the back here that has the crease. So when you have them all together, you can remember to yourself, oh, this was actually the good one. This is a better plate than my other card. This can be $90. This plate can be $70, even though it's the same condition when you list it. So, you know, you could use like different condition things and go, okay, that's light played and these other ones moderately played. But when it comes to sorting, you have two more piles that you have to manage and your brain has to process that's moderately played, that's light played, that's played, that's near mint, that's mint, that's damaged, that's like heavily played. Like that is a lot more effort than just a three tier system is what I call it. Not saying that you got you gotta do whatever. eBay has a five tiered system for grading. I think it's five conditions, it might be four, not sure. But like for me personally, if I can stick to things that are pretty consistent and the condition of a damaged card is between one and four, the condition of a played card has been four and seven, and a near mint card is seven to ten. As so an overlap in every grade, because that played card with like one crease and one thing at the top. That could probably be seen as like not like light played, not very light played, but like light played. Maybe some sellers. So I, I'm not trying to like reach at store straws or anything and tell you guys my conditions or whatever. But like when when I'm doing the sorting, that's the benefit. Uh, this I'm hoping that's explained. And if if I put this video up and some people still don't understand, that's more than fine. You know, I'm I'm not perfect at explaining things. So feel free, you can either reach out to me on Instagram or you just comment, I can talk about it more or I'll just make another video. I don't really care, to be honest, how my YouTube channel looks with all the videos that I have on there. I'll have a video that's just for one person and if it gets one view and helps the person out when they ask me a question, 
perfectly fine. Or if I have a video that gets a thousand views because it's a general video, whatever. This YouTube channel isn't my livelihood. It is my probably my uh, greatest achievement for the last 12 months, to be honest. So I see it that way and I'm ready. That's heat ran. That's magmortar. What are you doing there, you silly bum? Another way you can do it if you have a lot of cards, like doing this, all these cards are like relatively special. They're, they're not like, you know, they're hollow cards from sets and stuff. There's not that many of them. And because I chose to sort all my hollow cards at the same time, hollows, rares, full arts, legend cards, you know, most of these cards, it's a random Charizard. Most of these cards have, how do I explain this? Most of these cards are pretty similar. Like, you know, in most sets where Houndoom is, he's a rare or a hollow. Most sets where Ho is, it's like a rare or a hollow. And Houndor usually is just a common card, so there's not going to be that many in here. Heat Rain is usually a rare, hollow, promo, etc. So you're probably going to get a higher density of the same cards if you sort like your more expensive cards at the same time, if you have this or not. If you're just sorting bulk, you find it turns into the other way. You'll get like a lot of Charmanders, you'll get a lot of Growlifes, you'll get a lot of Hound Doors, you'll get a lot of uh, Vulpixes, and maybe some non hollow Nine Tails, but usually not, like Ponytards and stuff. You'll get your, like, that's why I like sorting these in two different ways. And this is why I'm doing like this. I'm not just sorting tens of thousands of cards here. I'm I'm being a little bit more direct with it now. Let's pick these stacks up and fix this. Sorry. It's actually... It might not look that hard, but uh, trying to focus on talking and explaining, but while doing, because I'm, I'm still trying to get work done. You know, it's 1 a.m. I'm, I'm not up for fun. So um, I'm struggling, but I'm doing my best. I'm going to probably put in some pretty solid days over the next few months because I'm I'm like I'm, I'm ready for it so expect a lot of videos a lot of sorting videos a lot of me rambling if there is a topic you want me to talk about or something you want me to talk about just say it let's get it out on the air now that I figured out how to do 4k's I can't believe I wasn't recording in 4k I think I tried it once and the file size was so big but it's not that big of a deal because I have two computers one can just render throughout the day and then I upload at night time. It doesn't really stop me that much. So HI, the random heat ran there. I messed up. Infernape, that card is different. Sometimes you got to be careful because the cards aren't always the same. So these two cards are different. And then the heat ran, I messed him up. So that this card can go in there. You with you, and you can go here. You guys are getting the full thing. I promise you, when I'm not recording, I'm like a thousand times faster. Don't make fun of me. We got a lot of Kingdra. That's a cool looking card, that Kingdra. Hope it looks good on that juicy 4K, guys. Oh, that... I recorded my Japan recap video, and I changed it to 4K. It just didn't go through. And I feel so dumb. Because, like, that is a video I wanted to keep around for a long time. And I can't, like, undo all that work. But you guys will see the Japan recap video in probably a week or so. Uh, this video, I don't know when it's going to come out. But it'll probably come out, like, afterwards. After the other one. Probably the day after. I'm not trying to, like, be a video spam Andy. But I just want to get these out there to explain it to people. There's no real reason to just keep these unlisted or whatever. So, plus, honestly, as a YouTuber, that's even a word for me. Listing a video, like doing a video, then uploading it, like like doing a video like this, like just a sorting video, and uploading it a few like weeks later is really bad for like continuity. Yeah, I can't even pick this Moltres up. So all these random cards, Militic, Mewtwo, and Mew, they don't really get that many Fire-type cards, if any. So I'm just going to put them together. Moltres can go here. Yep, Moltres is there. Magmortar. So, like, yeah, what I was talking about is... Uh, 
I do the videos and then I post them and then people comment and like t so much time has passed that I might have already done something that someone wanted to like ask a question about or I've just moved on to like different topics or you know I've gone away for a week and I can't like you know address the question sort of thing so it's 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 not great to like keep the videos banked up because I don't really care if I spam them if people uh, don't want to they want to unsubscribe or whatever because they're like spamming too much. Well, it really doesn't matter. Like I said, if it helps one person, um, whatever. So we got L M N O P. So N is first, and then P. So we put it like that. Now those cards that we did to clear up some space, they're all here. Now these are all in a stack. This is super simple. Now, the biggest problem with this is, that I've found anyway, is once I start sorting, let's zoom in, because this is going to be close. Oh, we're not going to do some full con condition checking here. If you actually want like a proper condition checking video, I'll set it up with the perfect light and everything, but I'll probably finish most of this off. Uh, off off stream this is kind of hard for me right now because it's the card is actually quite far away from my face and i like to go nice and close and i also like to have my light a little bit closer to the card so when i'm looking at it it's like really bright but obviously that is not great for viewing pleasure i guess <laughs> viewing pleasure is that a word viewing pleasure all right so oh, i can actually just check it on the screen this card what card is this the chance this card's actually just near me. It's really clean. Nothing on the sides or edges. Wow. Bunch of scratches there. Played. I mean, all these have pretty much been pre checked for played. Got a Delta Species Tyranitar. So you can see with the, the black background, it's actually uh, kind of easy to see all that edge around the left side. But this card, honestly, if I saw this as near mint, no one would know, like, the difference. They would receive this card and think it's incredible, because Japanese edgeware is so hard to see depending on which light. So if you shine the light this way and it faces away, it's got a bunch. But if you move it this side, I mean, you can't even see it. So I'm putting it on the plate, for sure, but these, these are incredibly clean. You might not even find, like, a better condition one on eBay than these ones. So these will be classified as played, but this is when I said like played's like seven, like four to seven. This is the seven played that I'm talking about. This card here is damaged. Proggy Park Torchic. Oh, it's got a little little bend in it. I remember that card. West was like, you should buy this Proggy Park Torchic, and I was like, that probably has bend in it because it's uh, it was sealed, and he's like, looks fine to me, and I was like, all right, and it was like fifteen hundred yen, and I want you guys to guess what happened and abandon it. So this card here, see structural integrity of the card is gone. It's all creased up. Not great. That's damaged, fortunately. So I keep these all kind of like flipped over. The biggest issue with like doing it like this is this has like a stain on the front. So right there, I'm just going to put this in damage. Biggest issue doing it this way is everything gets like flipped. Like you turn this around, you start at the last of the alphabet. It's not a big deal. Because you just start at the back, and then once you get to the front, you can just sort them into your boxes easily. Look at that car, it looks amazing. But, yeah, I'm going to do this all by myself now. I believe this video has run its course. Um, if there's anything else like this you guys want to see, or if you guys just want more like this, and me just talking with while I do condition checking or just sorting. Condition checking and talking at the same time is kind of hard, because my face will be like this. Like I'll be like, oh, you see my hair the whole time. Because I, I go like really close. Like when I'm looking at a card, I go like really close. And I usually have my light kind of angled in a certain way. They're like all I have to do. And I always condition check from the back first. So that, like when I do my cards, I condition check from the back first. And I can instantly see whether a card's played or not. So this card here has some thing down the bottom. That's played. I'm not even going to bother trying to justify it near mint. So like, you know, played. And usually I just sift through them with my hands. I know these cards are almost pretty much all played just because I pre-sorted them to being played. That card is damaged. So it's kind of unfair. I'm like sorting cards that I know are played. 
So this card here is very damaged. You see it right there. So I got that there, and this one here is uh, it's damaged as well. I'd be lying to myself if it's not. This card here is pretty close. Been there, been there, played. This is how fast it is for me. Because I have... The light on the screen looks like it's up here. But for me, the light is right here. And I can just see the reflection of any creases, any dents, any scratches on the back really easily. And it's very easy for me to sort these cards like this. Because I can just see that it's just you know, straight up. Or any card that I deem as near mint, when I do it like this, every near mint card that I sell gets double checked. And there's usually... I don't want to say there's not that many, but like I don't sell a lot of uh, modern cards, if any. Maybe 1% of my store is modern. So I don't just have like mass amounts of near mint cards. I remember these Dream Shine cards. I, I actually just had too many, so I threw them all. Yeah, it's all Victinis. I'm guessing the rest of these are E series. Yeah. I had too many Dream Shine cards. I just threw them all in these piles. They're actually all like near mint. So this card has a crease. I just seen it. Like, uh, I'm going to turn this down for a sec. You guys can see the crease there, the little, little bend. It shows up instantly. I, I just hold the cards like this, and I just go through it. But this is what my eyes, like when they're looking at these cards, my light is like a very long beam. You've seen my light before many times. It's a very long beam light, and it's just a bright white light, and I like a nice line. And if the line is clean across the card, then it's like, okay, well, the card is crease-free. All I have to do is this, half a second of just moving it up and down. It's all about being as efficient as possible. And then, yeah, so just like, and then with my near mint cards, if I need to double check them. So I double check all my near mint cards on the front because obviously there can be issues on the front sometimes. So I do the same thing, pick it up, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, depending on how expensive the cards are, what type of near mint cards. So this one here, I has some issues on the front. Sorry, I got I got blindsided by this. Maybe the lowest setting. Yeah. I have to move this to here. Sorry guys, this is scuffed. Um, there's little, tiny little dents at the front there and the bottom left corner is a little bit bent. But you can obviously tell that I checked the back and then I checked the front of the near mint cards. I don't check the front of the played cards because I just assumed them to be played. They come up in the scanner and they're very obviously damaged. Well, I just go, okay, that's a damaged card. But that I check the played cards when I do the scans or take the photos, however you do it. You don't have to have a scanner to do this. A lot of people think that you need to have my scanner to be able to sell raw cards. I sold raw cards for around six years using my phone and, and or stock images. So what's this ponytail looking? Yeah, it's not too bad. But these near mint cards are fine, and so are these. Nice, nice and fine. And the thing is, Japanese cards are so resilient. Like, it sounds dumb, but I've graded cards in loose boxes, and they've gotten PSA tens. They they actually are so strong with the way all the corners and edges are. It's it's quite incredible. And you know, even a card like this can still end up being sellable. What is this? Oh, nine tail the X. This has gone through the ringer. Oh, it has a great swirl on it. That's crazy. All right, so I hope the process has been explained to you guys enough here. Uh, if you need more, feel free to reach out. If you don't need more, feel free to say thanks. I'm going to sort the rest of these cards before I go to sleep. And that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. Hope you enjoyed the two-hour sorting video and this one here. And I'll see you guys next time i guess and if you have any other questions any other videos you want me to make just reach out man that's that's what i'm here for i'm still just you know i think i i, I got a little bit annoyed the other day even i'm not going to start a story right before i end the video <laughs> but i got a little bit annoyed the other day someone's like yeah i mean it must be good being at your level you don't have to do all the small stuff anymore and it's like man i don't even know why you would say that because if you will follow the channel you see the amount of small stuff small stuff that i do but it doesn't really matter whether I sell a card for twenty thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, one dollar, five dollars. The same amount of effort and prestige goes into all of it. The same amount of care and like the same everything. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I might be at this point, but I enjoy doing this 
the same thing as selling a card for fifteen, twenty thousand. This is what gets me going through the day. And some people think that it's uh, whatever, but I think it's great and I love it and it makes me happy. So yeah, enjoy the process guys because that's the most important part and I will see you guys next time. Do I look tired on this camera? I can't see it because I look in that and then I look at this picture to see how I look like. But do I look tired? <laughs> Good night. Where's my mouse? I don't even know how to stop the recording. Good night, everyone.